Buddha said that our conceit arise, arises from uh, the five aggregates. Conceit arises from the five aggregates because we don't see the five aggregates as they are. Uh, how can we see the five aggregates as they are? Where, what do we see when we look at the five aggregates? <laughs> huh? we, see them clearly in we see them impermanent, yeah. we see them unsatisfactory, we see them without self. This is how we have to see the five aggregates. Buddha gave, uh, I think I mentioned it uh, in the past, but it is not inappropriate to repeat it here in this course, a uh, very beautiful uh, similes, four, five similes, to show how impermanent, how unsatisfactory, how selfless the five aggregates are. Five similes, also given in uh, uh, Sanyutta Nikaya, uh, in the first volume, the uh, place I can find later on, I don't remember, I just remember the incident, what you call it, statement. In there he said, uh, <coughs> uh, our form, uh, F-O-R-M form, uh, he compared to form, F-O-A-M form. Uh, now this is very important place to remember these uh, similes, these five similes. Uh, because we want to see the, the five aggregates exactly as they are. To see them, if we remember the simile, at least we can visualize the aggregates. Uh, form as um, form, F-O-A-M, which is made up of a lot of bubbles, isn't it? Uh, when many bubbles put together, you have a whole bunch of a heap of, uh, you know, bubbles that looks like a big uh, object. Even you can take photographs. But when we break it, if you take a, you know, put your finger into it, each of them will break. And inside there's nothing, pure, empty bubbles, whole of them together. Similarly, when we break down every single element, uh, earth element, water element, air element, fire element, and uh, uh, color, smell, taste, and uh, nutriment of which this whole form, body, uh, is made. Buddha's analytical uh, insight knowledge was so deep long before this modern science uh, came into existence. He was talking about this that this body, when you break down into a minor, minute, divisible or in divisible uh, state, all you find empty. Inside there's nothing. Just like a whole bunch of bubble make huge, huge appearance of form. And that is the way we have to look at the body to see impermanence. And this whole bunch of bubbles made to, into a form are themselves are impermanent. They can break instantly. Similarly, this body breaks up. If you, in the insight uh, meditation mindfulness uh, of four foundations of mindfulness, from the beginning to the end, everything talks about this nature. Rising nature, passing away no nature, and then uh, gain 
knowledge and insight of the body, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness in the four foundations of mindfulness, perception is not mentioned because it is under the category of uh, volitional formations. And therefore it is not uh, specifically mentioned separately. So four foundations of mindfulness deals with the five aggregates. So at, at the every end of every passage he says, Nacha kinchi loke upadhyati. Atti kayoti vapanasa sati pachipatita hoti. We become mindful of the fact that the body exists. Jnana mattaya pati sati mattaya. The body exists for gaining knowledge and insight. What is the knowledge and insight? That this body is breaking up. This body is impermanent. And that impermanence we must see in the body. We must see in our own body the impermanence. You know, uh, only recently I began to see the impermanence of my body. When I was young I never thought this body is impermanent. Recently I began to see, every morning I see my skin is dry, peeling off on my face, on the forehead and everywhere. This skin peeling off began to, ta began to take place only recently, a few years ago. Before that, it did not peel off. It stuck to the body. Every dying uh, uh, skin, skin dies every day. But because of the oil of the body, of the skin, that dead skin stick to the body. So you can never see it. So now we hide it by using lotions, oil, something like that. We stick to the body by applying something. If we forget one day to apply any of these no, um, lotions, especially in dry days, you can see the skin coming out. That goes, if we don't put uh, nourishment into the body, that itself is enough to wear the whole body out, peeling off the skin every day. <laughs> so, we are the body, our body is impermanent. No question about it. And that Buddha said you can see with insight, uh, focusing mind on your bodily inner functions. Inner functions are taking place every moment, every day. And if you mindfully watch, you can see the changes taking place inside. And if you don't see that, then conceit can arise because of the healthy body. Conceit can arise because of the longevity. Conceit can arise because of uh, physical strength. Conceit can arise because of uh, appearance and so forth. So Buddha said, uh, Conceit arises from form, from the body. Feelings, Buddha said, is like bubbles. Vedana bubbulubama. For the bubble, Pali word is bubbula. B u b b u l a. Bubbula. Bubble. Our feelings are bubbles. They are bubbling all the time. Appearing, disappearing, appearing, disappearing. That is why some meditators use bubbling of feelings as an object of meditation. Some meditators use only feelings to see impermanence more clearly. You don't have to sit in one place, you, want to, you don't have to select one particular period of time to watch the feelings. Any time, any day, anywhere, in any posture, we can feel the feelings. 
they are happening all the time as long as we breathe. At least the breath has the feelings. So, when we mindfully watch the feelings, we can see feeling is changing, constantly changing, bubbling, coming up and disappearing, appearing and disappearing. Marichi Kupama Sanya, perception Buddha compares to a, a mirage. Mirage is called Marichi in Pali. Marichi also is called uh, red pepper. <laughs> but uh, here Marichi means uh, mirage. Uh, mirage, of course, is so vivid, so clear, it sometimes appears to be uh, real uh, water. And perception is like that. It changes. It is not uh, giving us real uh, appearance of, uh, of objects. It deceives us, <coughs> cheats us. That is why mira uh, perception is compared to mirage. Then volitional formations, uh, the simile uh, I use is uh, uh, sort of a f fun simile. And uh, we can play, we can pun on this word for uh, volitional formations. Uh, I came up with two uh, similes. One is a metaphor that I uh, one day uh, created in my mind. That metaphor is the, is the way how uh, sankharas are created to show the way how sankharas are created. Sankharas are created through greed and ignorance. In the dependent origination you can say avidya pacha sankhara. But avidya alone cannot create sankhara. There has to be greed, desire. So the moment we are born, that very moment, desire arises in our mind. Desire always, compared to uh, mother in Pali tradition, and Buddha said uh, in Dhammapada, a very, very, very powerful statement he made. There he said, uh, Mataraṁ pitaraṁ hantva rājāno dvecha khattye rattaṁ sānucharaṁ hantva anīgoyāti brāhmano. And again he said, Mataraṁ pitaraṁ hantva rājāno dvecha sottye veyyāgha panchamaṁ hantva anīgoyāti brāhmano. This is a very powerful metaphor he used. Mataraṁ pitaraṁ hantva, having slain the mother and father, and having slain two warriors, two warriors, and destroyed a country with its treasure. Ungrieving goes the holy man. This is the holy man's duty, to kill the mother, to kill the father, to kill two warriors, and to destroy the whole country together with its treasure. This is the very powerful metaphor. Here mother means greed. Father means ignorance. 
two warriors are eternalism and nihilism, belief in eternalism and nihilism. The whole country is senses. And the treasurer is attachment and lust, karma, uh, chanda. The holy man is an arahant. So, arahant has to kill the mother, I mean, one has to kill the mother, the father. Mother is greed, father is ignorance. So out of this, I created another metaphor. That means at the moment of birth, the mother is born. It doesn't take a one second. The very moment we are conceived in the mother's womb, the mother in us is also born. That is greed, is born. At the same moment, father also is born. That is ignorance. Now, as soon as the mother and father are born, the greed and ignorance are born, they recognize each other because of their existence in samsara. Mother has lived from time immemorial, father has lived from time immemorial. As soon as they are born, they meet each other, they recognize each other, and instantly they fall in love with each other. They don't take you one second. And they are so mature because of their existence in samsara, as soon as they fall in love with each other, the mother delivers a baby. It doesn't take too long for the mother to conceive and uh, to go to gestation period, it very quickly delivers the baby. What is this baby? Baby is called I. I. So three are born at the same time, simultaneously. Mother, father and I. Now the whole operation is in, uh, in, in, in action to create sankharas. Whole plan is set up to create sankharas without mother, without father, without I you cannot create Sankhara. And these three are together now. So mother and father keep supporting the child. This child is genderless child. This I is genderless. When the I is born in a girl, I calls, I am a girl. When I is born in a boy, I calls, I'm a boy. So, as a girl, I work. As a boy, I work. Then the girl might say, I am a baby, baby girl, I am a baby, I'm a girl, I am a, uh, yeah, I'm a teenage girl, I am a uh, old woman, grown-up girl, I am you know, adolescent girl, I am a, uh, you know, woman, I am this and that, old woman, young woman. Boy also says the same thing. I am an infant, I am a baby boy, I am a walking boy, I am a playing boy, I am a, a playboy, <laughs> this boy and that boy, and I am a man, I am old man, I am this. So, Sankharas both create Sankharas. Uh, this afternoon I tried to explain um, the definition of uh, uh, all these words uh, more clearly, but this morning I don't have time. Uh, so, 
the sankharas are uh, created by this uh, this uh, unity of this uh, trio this triple unity unity of three greed ignorance and i if there is no i no greed no hate no ignorance you cannot create sankharas even if you destroy i still parents exist greed and ignorance still exists because uh, greed and ignorance don't depend on i i depends on greed and ignorance because of greed i arises because of ignorance i arises but greed and ignorance does not depend on i therefore even when you destroy i greed and ignorance can still exist for instance when you attain the stream entry path of fruition you destroy i concept concept of i and still greed and still ignorance continues to exist so my uh, uh, modified uh, version of the uh, simile uh, for the uh, sankara this is the metaphor i created to give the background the simile i used for uh, describe for describing uh, uh, sankara is uh, spelled as on and on with i in the middle that is onion i use this uh, m- m- uh, simile because when you peel off an onion you cannot find inside any core any heart inside for this reason buddha used the banana plantain plantain tree when you cut the cut a plantain across inside you don't find a core you can peel off until it uh, turn into just peels sankharas are like that i use the simile of matter uh, onion because uh, because of sankharas that we keep on going on and on and on and on forever without coming to an end for this reason i use this uh, simile of uh, onion on the one hand when you peel off you can cannot find the core on the other hand uh, because of this uh, uh, trapped eye in the middle we keep going on and on and on then the last uh, uh, sankara what do you call last aggregate is called uh, uh, vijnana vijnana means consciousness consciousness buddha compared to a uh, maya maya upamaati vijnana maya is uh, uh, magician's uh, uh, work uh, magician's deludes uh, people by creating magic maya is uh, delusion uh, sometimes people ask uh, why that name was chosen for siddhartha's mother she is not just maya but maha maya <laughs> great delusion i think uh, maya is used in uh, hindu tradition uh, for uh, magic for uh, creating visual uh, images uh, you make things manifest in front of your eye which really is 
which really does not exist, you create it. Leela. That which does not exist, you make exist through manipulating uh, elements. Those, uh, it is said that those uh, rishis who have gained high uh, stages of meditation can make things appear, make things visible out of the, out of elements, they manipulate elements in such a way with their supernatural power that it, they create something that you can see. That kind of uh, uh, images created by those individuals, are, that action is called Maya. And she may be called Mahamaya because uh, she manifested in this form, gave birth to Siddhartha and passed away. She did not live to see Siddhartha's progress and attaining enlightenment. So she came and uh, delivered the baby, passed away. So perhaps for this reason they might have, I don't know. Anyway, uh, consciousness is compared to uh, Maya, uh, illusion. So, when we see impermanence of all these aggregates, we see none of these aggregates is satisfactory. Because we cannot hold on to any of them. We like one aggregate or another, we like. But next moment they disappear. And therefore, all the aggregates are unsatisfactory. They are unsatisfactory not purely because they are impermanent, but because of our clinging, upadhana. So, it is the upadhana khanda that is unsatisfactory, not five khandas. Five khandas themselves are not unsatisfactory. But five upadhanas khandas are unsatisfactory. That means clinging to these five aggregates, not seeing their impermanence, makes us unhappy. So the aggregate itself is neither happy or unhappy. Aggregate is just there, it is impermanent. It is impermanence. Something being impermanent does not make us happy or unhappy. If we do not cling to them. And we cling to these aggregates and make aggregates, the aggregates of clinging or aggregates subject to clinging and then we suffer. That is why fire aggregates become a source of suffering. And that is why the fire Buddha calls aggregates are five, uh, uh, what you call uh, dukkha khanda, aggregates of whole five aggregates. In one word he said dukkha khanda, whole five aggregates is the aggregates of suffering. Whole aggregates subject to clingings are aggregates of suffering, we must say. All the aggregates, five aggregates, subject to clinging are the aggregates of suffering. The five aggregates themselves are not suffering. Is it clear? Okay. As then, uh, so long as we have the tendency of clinging, grasping, uh, aggregates becomes a source of suffering. 
any aggregate. And also that we have to see through the mindfulness training, mindfulness practice. Once we see that, then the third reality will arise in our mind. The third truth. Third truth is the truth of non-existence of self. No self. Why no self? Because if there is a self, the very nature of self is holding, controlling, managing, overpowering, uh, manipulating, doing anything it wants. For instance, uh, the, if the self wants to stop change, it should be able to stop changing, changes. Falling sick, it should be able to stop falling sick. Growing should be able to stop, and so forth. The self is defined in defines as something that is permanent, eternal. Aroga, aroga means it never falls sick. <coughs> that is how the self is defined. The Buddha said, since there is no such thing in this body and mind, feeling, perception, thought, and consciousness, we conclude that there is no self. Now this is not a logical conclusion. Logically you can prove anything. You can prove existence of self logically as well as, well as uh, non-existence of self logically. Not seeing, uh, not uh, realizing the non-existence of self is a not logical conclusion. But it is uh, insight, it is wisdom that arises from seeing the previous true, uh, two truths, impermanence, unsatisfactoriness. Seeing these two things, we realize the other, other also we see. When we see two, we see the third as well. When we, say, when we say it is not logical, because logically you don't have to see anything. All you have to do is to reason it. Use the reason, uh, uh, through reasoning you can come to a conclusion that is logical. But this is not the reasoning, but this is seeing. Uh, when I see the light, I don't, have, I don't need any logic to conclude that this is light. I think this may be enough for this morning. <clears throat>